Hello, everyone. Welcome, 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 welcome. Welcome. Hello, hello, hello. Hello, everyone. Hope you're having a fantastic Tuesday. Tuesday, 23rd of June. How about that? Oh, hello, Doris. What a pleasure. Welcome back. Hello, Anne. Same again. What a pleasure. How's life in Germany, Anne? Is it Germany? Holland? Can't remember. No, it's too bad. This is Germany. Switzerland. I was close. Netherlands. Hello, hello. Hello, everyone. Oh, Jane, I know. Marisa. 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 I can't remember. I keep forgetting how to pronounce that. Sorry. Yeah, Jane, I know. Good memories from last year. I could be back there right now. Honestly, a few places. Um, Marija, that's how it's said. Marija. Marija. Marija, that's how it's said. Welcome, Marija. Good to have you back. Good to have you back. As usual, I'm giving it a few minutes. Make sure everyone's involved. Um, nice to have you all here. Samantha, Stacy, Melissa, Marija, Kim. Hey, Jill. Welcome, Jill. Hope you're well. Drew, always good to have you here. Doris, Jane, Carla, Bianca, Barbara. Good to have you all here. Lots of familiar names. Odwin, Anne, Anne and Anne. Beautiful. I think we might have everyone. So I think I might just go ahead. I know it's a, uh, oh, geez. my lighting situation is falling apart here. Crazy stuff. I hope you're all well. Uh, I'm actually at, I'm at home at the moment. Well, one of, one of my homes in um, Durban. Not a lot of light here. Sorry about that. Um, the world's crazy out there at the moment. Crazy. Tell you what. I call it baboonery. It's when, when you behave like, I don't know if any of you have witnessed when a leopard trees a troop of baboons. In fact, lions. Lions. Lions tree a troop of baboons. They get all frantic, panic. <laughs> Some of them end up jumping out the tree to their demise. So it's fun. I find that uh, quite similar, that behavior. What's going on out there in the world? People just being crazy. I urge you all to keep your wits about you and stay as sane as possible. Today we are talking about Photoshop or Lightroom. Controversial subject, some might say. Um, I should have said con Photoshop and forward slash or Lightroom. Who of you have used Photoshop? Has anybody had not used Lightroom? How's that for a question? Anybody? That's a better question. Otherwise, we're going to get a lot of hands up. Does anyone here not use Lightroom and predominantly only uses Photoshop? I don't think there'll be many, if not none. Nope. Nope. Fantastic. Okay, so I'm assuming most of you that have joined are Lightroom users and potentially occasional Photoshop dabblers. Maybe some of you even Photoshop enthusiasts. Um, maybe even some professionals. But we're going to look into it's 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 really important. I've, the reason why I brought this up is I kept I kept uh, even on again I'd get a, a inquiry on editing, and I've been doing some some private tuition at the moment, and um, uh, people would ask me on, on on Photoshop techniques, and and honestly, I have done a lot of Photoshop. I, I actually started on Photoshop um, this pretty much the same time I started on Lightroom actually, and I've been dabbling with it ever since. And um, but I still use Lightroom. People had this idea that I was just in Photoshop. I actually am a full-on Lightroom user and I use both regularly. And I'm going to show you why it's important, imperative, let's use a better word, to use both platforms. They both have incredibly powerful um, uh, uh, functions that the other one doesn't have. I wonder if there's a way I can tilt this light. 
see a bit of light in this. Tom, do you have a, another lamp in your room? Do you have any more? You know, that's oh, look at that. How about that? Beautiful. We got, we're back in business here. Hello, Samantha. Welcome. People, I think we've got a few more attendees. That's great. So we're going to look at what separates them and why you should be using both. Um, it really is not Photoshop. And we're going to look at the pros and cons. Because there is not many cons on either of them, but there is some pros and cons. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to share my screen with you. And we're going to talk about why you really, 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 really have got to use Photoshop, especially in wildlife photography. And if you're doing, you know, portraiture in a room or you're doing brand photography and you're shooting a car or someone's or, or football boot for a brand, you're not taking a lot of images. So it's unlikely you actually need Lightroom, and especially when you're doing that kind of um, graphic orientated um, designs, you probably don't need Photoshop. But if you're doing wildlife, I mean, sorry, you probably don't need Lightroom. If you're doing wildlife, um, where you're going to be likely in a scene, you're going to take a lot of photographs. You're really going to battle to quickly and effectively like you can. So we're going to get started. I'm going to share with that. Okay. Um, I'm just going to, I've forgotten really how to do this, man. Right. Okay. Share screen. And we're going to look at some quite, I'm sure a lot of you have, uh, there we go. Some of this will be quite self-explanatory. You know it already. Can everyone see me? Everyone um, aware of what's going on in front? Just let me know. Just send me a message if it's not going on. I'm going to talk about Lightroom first. Why we have to use Lightroom. And then I'm going to talk about Photoshop. What separates it. And then I'm going to talk about why we use both. And if you have any questions... Along the way, do let me know. I love questions, whatever questions. If it's related to editing, if it's related to wildlife, if it's related to absolutely anything, shoot away. Um, the first thing I'm going to look at, and this is the thing that really separates Lightroom, and this is why I, I must use it, um, is its library, its organizational um, functionality. You know, in Photoshop, if I open Photoshop, um, let's open uh, any picture, this one. Okay. If I open these two uh, interfaces, you can see if I want to open more than one um, image, I'd have to go into, let's go and let's open another one. It might be on my desktop. Let's just open this one on Seaside. This is how the interface looks. Okay, you can move between these photographs. You can even put it in a, in, a, in, a, in a slideshow kind of format where you can slide across from these photographs. But if you want to edit that one across to that one, you have to click on the top thing over here. And often if you haven't named your image, especially if it's uh, come off a hard drive and you've taken a whole bunch of images, it's going to be DC, DSC 6031 to 400, 500 you know, images potentially. It's very difficult to navigate between them. And this is what really separates Lightroom, especially for wildlife photographers. You have cataloging. We're not going to go into cataloging how to do it. There's various ways. As you can see, my way is quite simple. I am very fussy about what I keep. So I've just got Madikwe, Mala Mala, um, Mara, Tanzania, these various destinations and the year it was taken. I know within that year what I want to keep and, and, and what I don't want to keep. Um, and you can flick between those catalogs and all your photographs very easily. Now, most of you already know this. Second thing is this roll bar at the bottom. You don't have that in Photoshop, which is, it's, it, gets quite, it gets quite annoying when I use Photoshop and I want to check out different photographs. I can only really work on one at one time. So that's where, that's where Lightroom has a huge advantage over, over, over Photoshop is editing lots of photographs at once. Even if you want to paste, um, I'm sure you all know how to paste settings. If you have a whole bunch of settings and a whole bunch of photographs you want to, post a similar um, 
um, settings, like you've done contrast, you've done tabs, you've done all these things, you want to post it across a whole set of images, you can paste your settings across all a whole set of images all at once. You can't do that in Photoshop. So this is where library really comes in handy. You've just come back from the decoy, you've got heaps of photographs you want to sort through. So you can do it really nice and quickly like this in um, the develop module and paste settings across. So that's where Lightroom really stands out. Lots of photographs, small edits. That's where it is. Let me just see if I've um, retouched anything. Sorry, I haven't touched anything. Um, yeah, so that is the main things with Lightroom, which I think we should all definitely um, consider is organization, organizing your files. Photoshop can't really do that that well. They do have Bridge. There's a, there's a function I had to use. Those of you who are on Nikon, those of you who have shot Nikon, had a D850 when it came out. Lightroom couldn't read the file. So we went on to Photoshop and we had to use Bridge to sort out our uh, files, which is highly annoying. Even though Bridge is a great program, just it's, it's irritating that you can't do the Lightroom. Because at the end of the day, most photographs should only need a bit of Lightroom, if I'm honest. Um, that could, you, could actually, you could almost say that that should be your goal, to, to take an image that it doesn't need Photoshop. But unfortunately, especially in wildlife photography or if you're doing any kind of brand work, not always going to be the case. There's going to be stuff you need to do, big, big fixes, what we call composites, where you, you add and blend and remove and, and do drastic things to the image. But most images, this image of a cheetah, you can do, obviously you guys know these, you know all these bar functions over here, contrast, clarity. This is what Lightroom really comes in handy is you can add a filter like this in Photoshop, uh, camera raw filter where these, these exact settings come up. The nice thing about Lightroom, although you can still brush in Photoshop, it's ease of use in Lightroom. These are the graduation filters, okay? If you wanna add and take away contrast, you can add very easy by dragging and dropping. These days, you can even put a mask on um, so that it only affects the background, like so. Anytime. Oh, that one. You select a color. Hasn't worked that well over there. But you get what I'm saying. Very easy, easy to use the brush functions like this brush over here. You can put selective edits throughout your image very, very, very easily. You can do this in Photoshop, but it's a process. And often you need to add a mask and then um, it takes a little bit of time, but if you just want to add a bit of brightness to this side of the cheetah, you can do it nice and quickly in Lightroom. So really big um, positives of, of, of Lightroom. Ease of use, being able to catalog your photos and being able to work through them nice and quickly. I use Lightroom with every single image I've ever taken, not just Photoshop. So one thing it can't do unfortunately, is retouch to a greater extent. So it can't, I mean, this is its greatest retouch tool. Those of you can see over here, the um, kind of spot removal tool. If I want to remove this lion's eye and place it over there. Now, it is so basic. And if you are aiming to print something really big, be very wary of this tool because it's going gonna, it's gonna to leave marks, scarifications on your image where this little circle, I mean, the fact that it's, it can only do a circle shape is, is, is enough to put me off it because it's a very, 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 very rigid tool. It's not versatile at all. And if you're going to go that far into an image, into removing stuff, um, and it's a really special image that you really, really love, you really have to get used to Photoshop because it's the only way to do it. Um, let's just go there. Let's go all photographs. There we go. Okay, so that's that's some of the pros with and a couple of the cons. There's not a lot of cons with Lightroom. Like I said, it's it's retouching. If I want to, you know, not every day you get a, a leopard to jump straight at you, and I want to kind of remove this twig. As those of you have seen this photograph, I've done. There is literally no ways this algorithm will let me do it no matter where I put these things. I can go in here and I've seen people <laughs> try to do it. And don't get me wrong, I've tried to do it too. Um, 
these images and I'll put hundreds of these little things over the place. You can't in Lightroom. It's just going to look horrible. Um, so can't retouch to an extent as in kind of remove uh, blemishes on the face or stuff you don't want or twigs in the face. Really can't do it. Um, one great thing about, about Lightroom that we all need to uh, really get to know is that its settings are non-destructive. This is something that as a, at a, as a Photoshop user, you kind of miss when you, I mean, there's ways of being non-destructive in your edits in Photoshop, but when you save an image, I save this as um, whatever settings you want. You guys all know the settings. You have your own ones. You put your watermark, blah, 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 and you export. I close Lightroom, okay? Bang. Let's close Lightroom there. So when you close Lightroom, okay, when you close Photoshop, all that work is saved onto that file, okay? You can save it as whatever file you want, Photoshop file, PNG file, TIFF file. But the, the memory of, of how you edit it is gone unless you save it as a Photoshop file, which can be a very big file. In Lightroom, as you know, you open up Lightroom and voila, you come straight back onto your old edit and non-destructive settings have all been put here. So I'll reset this. So that wasn't a very good example. But as it was, um, let's see if I can go back. Sometimes the memory helps. So as all your old settings have been remembered by Lightroom in here. So it's a non-destructive program. All your settings can be config configurable no matter how, you, how much you, what you um, export the file at. And if you close the program and bring it back, no problem, nothing's less, uh, left. If I do it in Photoshop and I go to save as, okay, save to your computer, it gives you the file to save it, save it as a Photoshop document, which will have, if I have multiple layers in here, Photoshop's all about layering, layer, 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 layer. No matter how many layers, no matter how many adjustments I have in here, um, if I save it as a Photoshop file, this is what happens, okay? If I want to save it as something I want to put on Instagram, I save it as a JPEG, all these layers are locked into that JPEG. And I close Photoshop, I can't re-edit it, I can't access those layers again, like I can in Lightroom. I post it on Instagram and then I go, mm, you know, it's not so lacquer, well, I print it, and I see blemishes that I don't want. In Lightroom, you just open up that file again, change the settings, and go back again. In Photoshop, if you don't save it as a PSD, you actually can't, change it you can't reverse those settings and a, and a psd um show you what that looks like you can't just hold a psd on your cell phone unfortunately it's actually quite a complicated um file here it is yeah so i open up that psd and as you can see those adjustments are still here but unfortunately a psd is not as versatile to use you can't just upload it onto instagram from your phone and play around with it it's a, it's a little bit slightly more complicated file, which means not everything can read it. So that is a, a great positive about having Lightroom. If you don't need to do big edits, you, don't, you really need to have this because the way you save it, the non-destructive way of saving it and the ease of use coming back is really, really important. However, now I'm going to get into Photoshop. We've looked at the saving. Saving is really convenient in, in, in Lightroom because you can save it as any file you want those adjustments stay the same in Lightroom. You can always come back to them. Photoshop, once you close Photoshop, if it's not as PSD, you've lost all those adjustments. You've lost all that history. So you've got, if you don't like it, you've got to re-edit really the photo entirely, probably from its raw file. So I hope that makes sense. If you've got any questions, I haven't seen any come through. Lovely. No questions yet. That means it's making sense. Now, we need to get into why you've got to have both. Okay? Now, I'm sure some of you have been on some of my Photoshop tutorials, webinars, some have seen my tutorials, some are quite ridiculous, some are quite chilled, um, but you can have a lot of fun with the program. You can see here, this was done with Photoshop. Here's the original, let me crop into it like I did with the other one. Okay, leopard jumping across this, the water. And after some Photoshop te techniques, you can actually remove any blemish through various 
um, techniques. We can't go into those te techniques now. I'm actually doing a, a Photoshop webinar, I think the week after next week. Um, it's a long webinar. It's going to be two hours. And we're going to go into some more techniques. We did it on the other week. And uh, it's really a lot of fun. But it is, a, it is a science and it requires some practice. That's why we're going to do two hour sessions every couple of weeks um, and hopefully get the hang of this amazing program. Um, it's one downfall. It's one downfall is it's hard to use. Lightroom, you know, you can have a day session with Lightroom and know its functionality. I've been using Photoshop for a very long time and I'm still scratching the surface. There's so much to do science, but once you it, it, it's, it takes a bit of time, but uh, it's, uh, you can get the hang of it quite quickly. So although that is its one downfall, that's its one con. Um, or two cons, you can call its, its, its lack of um, edit history, unless you save it as a PSD, it's also kind of a negative. That's why you have Lightroom to counterweight its negative and Photoshop to counterweight Lightroom's negative. So you, they work hand in hand um, and it is hard to use. So you can see the interface is very different. Although layers come up here, it's, if you think of it, it's actually very similar to Lightroom's um, process. So if I add contrast here, okay, let's say I add brightness, a lot of brightness. I'm actually adding a layer of brightness on top of that leopard. If I now add contrast or anything, okay, it's going to contrast with regard to your previous adjustments. So it's just like layering, except for in front on top of it. That's the difference. So if I add brightness and edit that adjustment layer below it, largely you can't. It's stacking on top of each other. And if you want to start taking something away down here, you've got to come down from the top again. So if, if that makes sense. You can start to all these adjustments, and then you can go, mm, actually, I don't want that much. Well, oh, that's a good limit. So, what is that? Uh, is that game? Towers. Just fall to the ground and lose all the work, which sometimes happens, but that's the joy of Photoshop. Is, um, Carla, is the, audio, is the audio not so good, guys? That's not good. The audio needs to be good. How's everyone's audio doing? Should be, should, my internet should be quite good here. It's bad. Oh no. That's not good. Give me one second. I have a way to fix this. One second. One second, one second. This should help. Okay, let's see if this works. Okay. Give me a second here. How's this, guys? A little bit better? Right. Sorry, muted myself. <laughs> I hope you've, um, sorry, you've, uh, I hope it hasn't been that bad for that long, but it should be better. It should be better. I've plugged in my 
my phone, which, which um, oh, lovely. We're back in business. I don't know what's, uh, what's going on there? Um, beautiful. Thank you, Kim. Thank you, Carla. I wonder what that was all about. I hope this is better. Let me know if it breaks. As soon as it breaks up, let me know, because then I can maybe, I don't know, tie, tie some copper wire to my phone and throw it over a tree. Um, but let me know if it breaks up again. Where was that? What was I doing? Oh, Photoshop. We're going to look at its interface and why we genuinely do need to use both often. These aren't really good examples. Let me let me go across to. Okay, I think we've just we have we have we understood now what's the similarities between Lightroom and Photoshop in terms of, in terms of layers. Lightroom, you layer up, but you can't come underneath and manipulate one of these layers. Photoshop, you can layer up and you can come go, I don't want that, or I want to change that, and you can change it that way. So you've got much more control in Photoshop, but you only need to come to Photoshop when you really, really need to. For example, this image. There's no ways of fixing it in, uh, in Lightroom. Absolutely no ways. Truly, you can't. And being Adobe product, this is a joy of Adobe. All of the Adobe products are linked. Lightroom, Audition, Photoshop, um, Premiere Pro, After Effects, you can move your, your files around. So edit in Adobe Photoshop and you can bring it straight across to Adobe Photoshop. And Adobe, they don't want you to save something out of Adobe and then actually re-import it into Lightroom and it makes it very complicated. So from here, those of you who've been on tutorials with me in Photoshop again, you can just command S and it sends it straight back to Lightroom. And you can keep your catalogs and you can keep it all organized and say straight back into the catalog that you imported it from. So this is the joy of having both. Now I can get to Photoshop and I can do what Photoshop is good for, which is composites. Changing an image, um, changing the structure of an image. You can call it that. So here, come on, Jay, I'm not going to go into, those of you who want to who really get deep into a lot of Photoshop, techniques you have to do an actual photoshop webinar which is coming up soon the second one is coming up soon those of you who missed the first one but i'll show you a few things that separated from lightroom okay composites what i mean by composites is you can add various layers to an image more than one layer okay um so you can actually in different layers you can see my mouse over here Okay, background layer, which is the one that you imported in from Lightroom. Command J and I just added another layer. It doesn't matter how many layers you want to add here. And then each layer, this is one of the greatest things about Photoshop. You can choose how that top layer blends with the bottom layer. And that is a beautiful thing. When you're doing reflections, when you're doing all kinds of things. I mean, this is just a, a free example. So now you can choose how screen, so it'll, it'll, it'll darken the dark areas. You can obviously see that works terribly for this photograph, but you can choose how that layer interacts with the layer below it. You can't do that in Lightroom. Also, if you add, say, an adjustment now, all this pretty much the same adjustments that you get in Lightroom come up here, okay? Adjustment layers, um, brightness, levels. Let's add some levels, hey? Actually, let's, la let's, add, let's add something that's gonna make a nice big difference. Let's add, black and white okay added the black and white let's make the black and white nice no let's make a little bit more contrast let's bring the blues not a lot of blues oh it's in the water make it splash maybe the science let's keep those the same greens add a little bit of contrast now we can actually tell how this adjustment even blends with the bottom layer so not only can you make you can choose how each layer of the image itself each composite blends with the one underneath it you can actually choose how the adjustments blend with the layer underneath it okay so you can have a look over here now you can choose i mean there's there's endless ways and you've got to play around um and how you do it how that level of of um black and white will blend with the layer below. So if I went to hard light, obviously hard light 
kind of it's like an it's like a very quick way of adding contrast into a scene this one's obviously a little bit heavy click on hard light it's down the saturation a bit because it's on a black and white channel um and if i don't like it that much you can shoot down the opacity of each layer so this is the joy of photoshop layering up and how each layer blends with itself that's really what defines it these tools in the side here i mean this is what scares people from photoshop quite often is they look at this tool shed they look at the tool shed over here and they see all kinds of funny things going on and um it's really difficult to 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 um get a grasp of all these tools honestly a lot of them you're not going to really use okay you're going to probably use q um at the bottom here which is masking this is the same thing as selecting so if i want to do select an area that i want to work on red is selected okay if i click, click q again now i've made a selection of that area that means if i want to affect that area and nothing else outside of it now you can do this with a brush oh um you see i'm on the wrong layer here i'm not going to go into why that's a problem just yet because that's for advanced photoshop now it's the same as brushing in, in Lightroom. You just want to add sharpness to this area. So it's the same thing. If I just want to erase that area, okay? Hang on. I'm going to have to do this again. Q. We're going to brush. There we go. Select that area, click clear again. If I want to, I did actually rub it out. Rub out just inside that area. That's what I'll do. But I'm not going to do that. So I made a mess here, getting a bit crazy. Get another one going. If I wanted to just affect this area. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I'm uh, going a bit crazy here. Just wanted to affect that area, press Q again, and you can affect what's inside that area. Okay, so if you wanted to rub it out, sorry, wrong button E, you'd rub out just inside that area. So it's the same thing as brushing in Lightroom. If I wanted to add sharpness to that area, um, you could do the same thing, but adding sharpness in um, Photoshop is a little bit different. And this is another thing where, where Photoshop is really good is, is adding kind of universal global filters to your to your image so if i wanted to add let's say i want to make a sepia those of you who have been with me in sepia um uh tutorials that's a that's for a long that's for a well, much longer webinar but um we'll get into that at another stage so let me just get rid of this channel mixer i'm still selected yeah yeah pull that back put that away if i want to get into sepia if you look at the adjustments, you can choose filters, different kinds of filters to add onto your, um, onto your image. So CPA over here, just like that. And you add the CPA. It's not nearly as effective as you want it to be, so you can bring it up. But inside this, you can choose, let me bring this away, how that CPA blends with the bottom layer. Again, over there. You can go dark and contrasty. That's a little bit too contrasty. There is a much longer process to making a sepia. This one looks terrible because you can't just have a standard approach to making sepias. And I will actually, that's a good idea. We'll do a webinar on, on, on creating sepias. Um, and if I haven't done it, I thought I already had done it. Anyway, we will do one of those, but that's going to be here for a webinar on its own. Okay, let me just see if there's anything I've left out on on pros of Photoshop, tools, layers, blending. I've told you about blending. Any questions on blending, let me know. Removing subjects. Honestly, you can't do it in, in um, Lightroom at all. But over here, if I zoom in, I want to remove that. Easiest one, those of you who have been with me in tutorials before, J function, click the letter J. Again, we're not going to go through the deep dark corners of Photoshop in this tutorial because we're just looking at the differences between Lightroom and Photoshop, not actual lengthy Photoshop techniques. So that'll be for another webinar that I hope you all join. And you can just get rid of stuff as easy as this using it's a content aware algorithm that takes stuff that's around it and adds it into it. And that way 
you just get rid of stuff just like this. Quick and easy, and you can go around. Now, you can obviously get stuck over here on the whiskers. Absolutely. Always get stuck on the whiskers. You can see the algorithm doesn't quite join the whiskers up. But with Photoshop, there is no limit to how much you can manipulate any shape within your frame. It is completely configurable. Once you've imported it into Photoshop, you can configure that thing to your heart's desire. So what are we going to do? Come into it. We're going to select Photoshop. One of its big things is selecting stuff. You can select anything. Um, if I want to select half this leopard's face, just like that, okay? By putting it on another layer, it means I'm not going to affect the layer below it. All I'm working with is this half of the leopard's face. See that? By just making another layer. Layers upon layers and layers. Sometimes I've made 60 layers to uh, an image and of just playing around and going crazy with it, coming back and forth. Sometimes you lose track of things. So it's really important. Actually, I don't, I, if I don't need to do a lot, is to label your layers over here. So say half face, half face, and you can actually keep track of your layers. So that's where, that's the major difference. Actually, that's a good way of putting it. Lightroom, you organize your images and have control over its uh, catalog and where it's come from and how to um, arrange all of it. Lightroom, Photoshop, you arrange your layers and have control over the organization of your layers. So that's the two big differences. So this one you can name Leopard um, by just double kicking on it and you can name all of them. Brightness and contrast, you can, it's really named as brightness and contrast. You can do all kinds of things. You can group all the layers into one. Shift, Command G, make one group, and then you can make more layers again. Over here, it's up to you. And they can stack up and stack up and you can play. All of a sudden, you don't, want, you don't like what that layer is doing to the image, drag it and drop it away. So, back onto our leopard face. This is what I mean by it being completely configurable. Transform, flip horizontally. And you line them up, and you've got a leopard with his face over there. Now, obviously, you've got to rub out bits and pieces over there. Like I said, this is the, the joy of Photoshop. You have absolute control over your layers. So I can click here, make a layer mask. Now, what a mask does is it allows you to make parts of a layer visible and other parts of a layer um, non-visible and change that around as you go. It's non-destructive. That's the great thing. If you rub it out and you think, oh, I want that back, you just rub it back in again. So once you're on a layer mask and you click brush and uh, you can see over here in this bottom corner, the rouse gets big. If it's on white, it'll rub it in. I press X and I rub it out. So if the black's on top, you rub out that layer. But if I go a little bit later on and I go, hmm, actually, I want that back again, click X. So white is on top at the, at the moment. And you can bring that layer back again. See that? Very useful. Absolute control over your layers. So X, I want to rub out that layer over there, bits and pieces of it. Just so it looks, this, looks like a normal leopard at the bottom. Just like that. Maybe a cross over there. Bang. And you've got... A leopard okay if you really want to be good at this and make sure it's different and you're going to sell it as a piece of art or something you need to make it slightly different so you click on j okay let's make them all one layer click on j and you make the spots a little bit different you know they don't they, they will never be a little bit uh, completely symmetrical so you just play make it a little bit uneven okay now it's got one freckle there and one freckle there bang Move some of those spots, and now he's got a non-symmetrical. It's not exactly the same with the side of his face, which is obviously going to be unnatural. A little bit of dirty work, getting rid of these vines. Sorry, this uh, sedge grass. Um, there we go. Let's bring it up. You can see how powerful this J function tool is, and you've cleaned up your image just like that. Okay. Nice and easy. And we've got a much cleaner image. Bang. So there's the strength of Photoshop. Conf configuration of each layer, control over each layer, um, organizing your layers, organizing all your adjustments. It's for big edits.
Lightroom is for small stuff. There's not much for you to do, a bit of clarity, a bit of contrast, a bit of this, nice and ease of use. Get through a bunch of photographs um, very quickly, get them all edited, get them out there. That's Lightroom strength. Photoshop, you've got something so special. The animal's in a position. I've been working in Africa my whole life, and I don't think, I think this is the only time in almost 12 years of working that a leopard has jumped straight at me, looking straight at me and landed in the water. I would have killed, done anything um, to have the camera equipment I have now back then. I mean, I would have been very happy. Very uh, low light and uh, not that sharp. Anyway, I won't cry about that too much now, but you can see the difference. With an image like this, what I really want to keep and I want to frame it in my house and I'm going to make a beautiful big picture. There's a Senegal bush male leopard. I really enjoy them. There's a big boy and I want that grass out of the way of his face. Not that it's not that important, but in this image, I think it is. That's when Photoshop comes in. Removing, adding, control, and doing big things. So that is, let me just make sure I haven't forgotten anything. Mm, done filters, graphics, text. Text is a good one. This is something that's often kind of, uh, those of you, if you're running a business now, your own business, and you're doing some stuff, social media stuff online, okay? You can't add text, text in, in like It's just as easy as putting in a tool and typing whatever text you want, okay? Um, how would you spell it? It would be one word. Bush mail. Bush mail. Okay, you can choose font, you can choose its size as you would in any kind of Word document. So, really cool for um, oh. Senegal. It would be how you spell Senegal. Oh, there we go. There we go. Beautiful. So, there we go. Add a bit of text, put it down in the bottom, and one of the greatest things about Photoshop, nice and easy. I want to command S, bang. I want to, I'm done with all of this now. And let's get out of Photoshop. Don't save. And there is my photo back in Lightroom with my Senegal text in it. So Really powerful tool, both of them. Those are the pros and cons. Those are the big differences. I'm gonna re -go, I'm gonna go through them again now, just quickly, so we we're aware of them. Um, Lightroom is ease of use and cataloging. That's its biggest strength. Being able to sort your photographs and catalogs like this, and you can go in endless. You can even link it to your Smug Mug account if you've got one. Um, Adobe Stock, Flickr, all those accounts. You can link it to them. Very easy to create even catalogs within these. So organizational strengths. Lightroom wipes. Photoshop out. Um, being able to, to edit lots of photographs at once, again, Lightroom wipes Photoshop out. You can select them very easily, move between them, compare them, um, uh, cost it the same edits across a whole section of photographs. Very good at getting through a lot of photographs and doing small edits. Big negative for Lightroom is retouching itself, removing blemishes that you don't want in the photograph, having a lot of control over each layer of edits and coming back and forth. So with big edits, Photoshop's your best friend. So it's definitely worth having both. Guys, I hope you enjoy it. Any questions about Lightroom and Photoshop? Any questions at all? Anyone? It's been great having you all here, I must say. Always a pleasure. Always a pleasure. And um, just know that we're gonna have a big, Photoshop webinar coming soon, or actual Photoshop techniques um, that we're going to go into in a couple of weeks. I'll keep you posted. But until then, have a great day. I'll sign out. Pleasure, Jane. Pleasure, Anne. Pleasure, everyone. Any questions, let me know. I don't have to go away. Pleasure, guys. Pleasure, pleasure, pleasure. Thank you, guys. Thank you all. 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 Any questions, let me know. I don't have a moment, no rush. So I'm here. I'm here all day, all night. Pleasure, everyone. Stay tuned. We're doing some more webinars. We'll get into some tactics now that you know the difference. I hope you get both. That is my, my parting bit of advice. Let's get both. 
and learn both, you need both. That is the golden rule, the bottom line, the fact, the just the full stop, end of story. Pleasure, Sanjvi. Good to have you here. Yes, that'll be great. That'll be great. Good catch up is needed. Take care, everyone. If there's no questions, I'm going to bid you all farewell. I hope I see you in the bush soon. Very soon. Oh, I need it. Um, otherwise, I'm going to end this meeting. And I'll chat to you all soon. Take care. All the very best from Wild Eye, from myself. Chat soon. Cheers.